Hello. In this video, we are going to develop expressions for the energies of the various J levels that result from spin orbit coupling in two special cases. The first special case is P1, where we have one electron in AP orbital, and the second case is D1, where we have one electron in a D orbital. So our first case is P1. And recall that our expression for the energy of the various levels, and I'll just leave out the subscripts here, you found it to be H, C, A, where A is the spin orbit coupling constant, divided by two times J, J plus one, minus L, L plus one, minus S, S plus one. Recall that we have two different J levels here. So since we have one electron, it tells us right away that our S value is going to be one half. Since it's a P orbital, it tells us that our L value is going to be equal to one. Because an orbital angular momentum value of one, L equals one, is synonymous with a P orbital. Now we compute the J levels. J goes everywhere from L minus S up by ones to L plus S. We'll see uh, as an aside that the number of J levels uh, when we only have one electron can only be a maximum of two. If we have an S orbital, there's only one J level. If we have any other type of orbital and just one electron, there'll be two different J values. So in our particular case here, let's look at L minus S, the absolute value. So that's going to be one minus a half, which is one half. So one of the possible J values is going to be a half. And if we go up to L plus S, we have one plus a half, which is three halves. So the two possible J values for the case of P1 will be J equals one half or J equals three halves. And it is those two different J states, the energy of which we are going to find. Let's find the energy for the J equals one half state. Recall that in this particular case, we already know what S is. S will be one half for our formula, and the value of L will be one. And then for both different J states, the value of J will be different. So therefore the potential energy will be different. So let's see what we get here. So we have H C A divided by two. Our J value is equal to one half. J plus one is equal to one and a half, which is three halves. So we have one half times three half minus L times L plus one. L is one, L plus one is two, minus one times two, so that gives us minus two. And then since the spin is one half, S is one half, S plus one is going to be again three halves, similar to the J value there. We can simplify this a little bit more. H C A over two. This is equal to three quarters minus two. Minus it again here we have minus three quarters. It is useful to recognize that the first and the third terms are identical, but of opposite sign so that we can cancel them. So we are left inside the parentheses with a minus two, which will cancel the two into the uh, denominator. So we get the energy of this particular state is going to be the minus one times H C A. So this will depend upon the specific spin orbit coupling constant for the particular compound that we're talking about, particular element we're talking about. Um, but this is what the energy expression will be when J is equal to one half. The other case we want to look at is for the J value being equal to three halves. So again, we're continuing with the P1 case and we're looking for the various energies. So again, for our formula, we have H C A over two. 
And recall that our first expression here is j times j plus 1. j is equal to 3 halves, which means that j plus 1 must be 5 halves. Our second term for minus l, l plus 1. l is still equal to 1. l plus 1 is 2. So this term stays being minus 2. Our final term is minus s times s plus 1. We know that s is equal to 1 half. S plus 1 is equal to 3 halves. So the total energy for this particular J state is given by this expression. One thing which I'd like to point out here, even passing, which is a useful labor-saving device, is that if we have the same values of S and L, but the values of J change, the only value in the expression here that changes is the first one. So if we have multiple uh, J levels for the same S and L values, these two terms will stay exactly the same for each of the energies. The only term that will change is the J times J plus 1 part. So we notice minus 2, minus 2, and this is the minus 3 quarters, which is minus 3 quarters. So the second and third terms do not change for the J level change. So now here we have H times CA divided by 2. 3 times 5 is 15 for the numerator. The denominator is equal to 4. Minus 2. I also notice that I'm going to have fractions here that have a denominator of 4. So it's convenient at this point to convert the whole number minus 2 into a improper fraction and make it equal to minus 8 over 4. So we convenient later on. Again, we have minus 1 times 3 is 3, and the denominator is 2 times 2 is 4. Again, recall that this term, minus 4 over 2, is exactly the same as minus 2, minus 3 quarters, minus 3 quarters. But now we can take this expression and simplify it. We have 15 minus 8 is 7, minus 3 is 4 quarters, which is equal to, to 1. So we have inside here we have an expression that's equal to 1. So we multiply that by our coefficient in front, and it gives us the energy of this state is HCA over 2, with a positive. That's important. Here is negative. This is a positive value. Now that we have derived energy expressions for the two different J levels of P1, it can be convenient to sketch out how these two energy levels are related to the energy level for the P orbital in the absence of spin or coupling. So let's just say that this is the energy level when L is equal to 1. So this is in the absence of spin or coupling. And we know that with spin or coupling, it splits into two different J states. The higher energy state, when we have just one electron, is J is equal to 3 halves. The lower energy state is equal to J equals 1 half. And we can kind of just continue this as a dash. This would be the energy in the absence of spin or big coupling. So now let's note what the actual energies would be relative to the unperturbed state for the different j values. When j is equal to minus, uh, j is equal to one half, the energy level, energy is going to equal to minus hca. When j is equal to three halves, the energy is now going to be equal to a positive hca over two. One thing to notice is that when we have spin over coupling, that the splitting of the two states is not symmetric with respect to the unperturbed state. In other words, the J level, when J is equal to 3 halves, the energy is raised by an amount that is different than the amount that the energy is lowered when J is equal to 1 half. So we notice going from the unperturbed state to J is equal to 3 halves, we go up by a half of HCA. Going down when J is equal to 1 half, this is minus HCA whole. So this uh, energy difference here is twice as big as the energy difference going up to j is equal to 3 halves.
Our second example that we wanted to take a look at was the case of d1. So in this particular case, since we have a d orbital, the um, L value is equal to 2. The value of S, since we have just one electron, is equal to 1 half. Let's see what the possible values of J are going to be. So recall J goes from L minus S up by 1s to L plus S. So let's see what the possible J values would be. So L is equal to 2. S is equal to 1 half. This expression is 2 minus a half, which is equal to 3 halves. 2 plus a half is equal to 5 halves. As we suspect, we have exactly 2 J levels when we have one electron and we're not dealing with an S orbital. So now let's look at the energies of the various different J states. So the first one we want to look at is the case where J is equal to 3 halves. And it's rewriting the formula just one more time just to remind ourselves of the various terms that we're using here. So we're going to look at the case where the j is equal to 3 halves. And I somewhat alternate between using v for potential energy or using e for the energy equivalent meaning. So let's see, we have h c a over 2 j is equal to 3 halves, which tells us that j plus 1 is equal to 5 halves. Now here, l is equal to 2, so l, l plus 1 is equal to 3, minus 2 times 3 is a minus 6. Last but not least, we have this s, s plus 1, which carries over from our p1 examples before. The spin is 1 half, and these s plus 1 is equal to 3 halves. So now if we can simplify our expression a little bit further, we get 15 quarters. And uh, since we're going to have things divided by 4 again, we can convert minus 6 to minus 24 divided by 4. And then we have minus 3 quarters here. As far as the Numerators here, we have 15 minus 24, so that's minus 9, minus 3, minus 12, divided by 4, which is minus 3. So we get minus 3 halves times HCA, and that is the energy for the case where the J value is equal to 3 halves. Now we look at the case where the J value is equal to 5 halves. So again, we have J times J plus 1. J is equal to 5 halves. J plus 1 would be 7 halves. L is equal to 2. L plus 1 is equal to 3. So the minus L plus times L plus 1 term is equal to minus 6. Last but not least, we have our S times S plus 1, which gives us our 1 half times 3 halves. And now we would like to uh, simplify this quite a bit further. We have our HCA over 2, 35 divided by 4, Again, our 6 we can write as 24 divided by 4. And our last term is going to be minus 3 quarters. Again, as before, uh, we saw that with the j's equal 3 halves, the second third terms in the energy expression are exactly the same, no matter what the j state turns out to be. So now we can simplify even a little bit further here. And we notice that we have 35 minus 24, which is 11, minus 3, which is 8. So we have 8 divided by 4, which is 2. Cancel the 2 here, which gives us a value of plus h 
C A when J is equal to 5S. Our next step is to sketch out an energy diagram showing the unperturbed L equals 2 state and then showing the relative energies of the two different J value states that are associated with L is equal to 2. For the first case, let's look at J equals 5 halves. The J equals 5 halves will be higher in energy. And the 3 halves will end up being lower in energy. Next, we can be a little more quantitative by writing next to the J value the expression for the energy. So when J is equal to 5 halves, the energy is equal to a plus HCA. Remember, A is the spin orbit coupling constant, which depends on the specific element that we're talking about. In general, uh, A depends as the fourth power of the nuclear charge Z. So as the nuclear charge increases, the uh, spin orbit coupling constant increases very rapidly. So this is the higher energy state. A lower energy state, when J is equal to minus 3 halves, has an energy of minus 3 halves HCA. So again, we notice that the splitting is not symmetric, so that the higher energy state is not the exact same amount higher in energy than the lower energy state is lower in energy than the unperturbed state. In other words, this distance here is not the same as this distance here, which may be surprising for people who are familiar with uh, introductory inter, uh, molecular orbital theory, where we generally assume that the bonding orbital is as much lower in energy as the antibonding orbital is higher in energy, so long as we uh, omit considerations of overlap and more complicated factors. So here, even before considering those things, we notice that the splitting due to spin orbit coupling is not symmetric. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one and have a happy new year 2017.